now then, welcome back to another episode of Avant on the FTOG server. How you doing? Welcome back, welcome back. As you can see, I've got a fence, I've got a railing around the top of my warehouse property in here. And it was something that I was working on last episode and I came up with a plan and I got it sorted and now we have more of a warehouse than we ever did before actually looks like racking that's what i was going for actual racking look and from here as well this this actually looks pretty cool i like the look of it oh ooh, ooh. we got some uh, got some frame rate lag hang on something somewhere happened there we go look yes it it kind of suits it suits the build i like it i like it a lot it's really good and mistaken's just joined uh, but I, I particularly like how i've got these set up now it looks like they're inside some racks look all used by chisel bits, all chisel and bits used to make those blocks sorted out. Uh, I ended up copying uh, copying the blocks themselves. So if we have a look in here, you can see that all the different parts that I ended up using uh, regular, once I'd got them assigned and I decided what I wanted to do, I used the bits to make these different sections and then copied them using the uh, positive chisel design from chisel and bits. Yep, done all that. Uh, I'm currently now looking into what to generate power with, right? I'm looking at generating a ton of power. I don't really know what I want to generate power with yet. I'm still working something out. I am still working it out. But I want to finish this floor off first before I get on with the next stage. So let's say hi. Everybody's coming on now. Look, we've got Grok, Link. Uh, they've been on most of the day. Toady, Mistaken, and Thorgal himself has come on now. Uh, one more detail that I should let you know about. You might notice that these are slightly more pronounced than the others. Well, that makes for a good ladder. I could just jump up them and get onto the top. And then run around on the top and do things up here. That's why I've got the ladders at the minute. I'll probably take those ladders off at the ends at some point. But I've got a little ladder running up each one. Uh, each pixel allows me to stand on a pixel and each one is one pixel smaller that is one pixel i'm standing on there two pixels three pixels just stacked on top of each other they don't you don't really notice from the side but i'm glad um glad that it's working out the way i want it to anyway uh next up then i want to place some of these factory blocks and i want to get some of the chisel bits from these guys uh, let's see take some of these and I want to just cover the floor because I've used the uh, glowstone thankfully I got a load of glowstone from this agricultural expansion stuff which is pretty epic pretty epic uh, I had 64 dropped off in a chest at the end of the last episode I still don't know who to thank because I'm recording this soon after uh, but another thing that I spotted look check this guy out it's a worm it's a worm right this worm wanders around on this particular block right i right click uh, once you've uh, once you've got a worm you can hoe grass and get a worm and then this worm i think it's actually additions uh, this worm then just you can right click onto a piece of um farmland i guess i guess there's nothing else i haven't tried anything else i right clicked him on a piece of farmland and he now wanders around that one piece of farmland and he gives a bone meal effect to all of the crops around him. So let's just show you this look. Right, so as he's wandering around, this uh, three by three area that he's in the middle of should get the bone meal effect. Um, prove me wrong, why don't you now? Come on. Come on, Mr. Snail. Uh, Mr. Snail. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Worm. Come on, Mr. Worm. Show me your bone meal effect. Yeah, so I did that, and I ended up with the glowstone that I wanted, right? So now I've got these little lips down here, but I want to cover the glowstone. I want to make sure that the glowstone, when it's covered, uh, doesn't have a bad negative effect. So let's just take a couple out, make sure my F7's working, because it's, it's brightly lit around here. Oh, I just took some blocks. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah. 
And gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. F7. Yes, okay. F7's on. Right, so when I cover these over, do they still light up properly? Uh, I know it didn't before. I had to have torches down here. And yeah, there we go. So yes. Yes, yes, yes. The light shines through that. Okay, so now I'm thinking on the flooring side of things, putting flooring like this down, it will mix in with the other um, chisel and bits blocks. So they'll have a little overhang like that. Uh, and we should see a floor developing quite nicely. Now I've thought of some other little things, some other details, but they'll take a bit of time to sort out. So I won't worry about doing those the detail work yet uh, but that gives us a nice clean uh, warehouse flooring style let's put these back down here just to keep everything well lit i don't need any mob spawning in here even though creepers are the only ones that really uh, trouble me any and put you back down there thank you that's it all right so yeah that is what i've been up to and also i've hooked up these now so that they're actually receiving all of the things out of the uh, water strainers so this is all that's left out of the water strainers that sugar cane should disappear any second now disappear sugar cane disappear oh actually no I haven't set the sugar cane good point actually and I haven't set the uh, pumpkins either so we'll go and do that while we're down here I don't know how much space is left on the export bus I call it an export bus but it's actually an export pipe or something in it so I've got it set up, so I've got them all linked with oak trim and a draw controller at the end here. And I'm telling it to put all of these things in because it doesn't do it automatically. It seems you have to tell it what to export. It won't just automatically export everything. So that's okay, that's okay, so long as I know. That means that we're limited to uh, like uh, nine items per export um, cable though, which is a slight pain in the butt, but still nothing to worry about too much. Uh, now if I throw these in here, they should get taken and exported out. Yes, there we go. So these are the only things left from the water strainer that I'm not exporting out into stock for the warehouse. So the warehouse now has four types of fish as stock. And I have a little over a stack, maybe two stacks for most of those. I'm actually eating fish now as well. I haven't bothered to cook them, I just thought I'd get them raw just in case. People might want them raw for some reason. Uh, we've also got the other vanilla block types that don't come from the strainer just to put them away and i've put a void upgrade on this particular cobble one just to get that out of the way but we've also got over 30 stacks of clay now and over five stacks of gold nuggets i'm not planning on changing them into anything and uh, selling them differently or giving them away differently in the warehouse they're just there they're just free because i produce them for free so they're there for free uh, the only thing I'm really using at the minute is power. And I need to figure out a power supply. Now, <clears throat> I was thinking about getting the agricultural expansion coal uh, and making a coal farm and just farming coal to feed all the different things. Because I don't really want to use my tree farm for charcoal. I uh, kind of want to use the tree farm just for having wood. I just want to get wood. And so I've got other things that I need to consider now. What am I going to actually use for power? I know that the diamond generator produces a hell of a lot of RF per tick, but it costs quite a lot of diamonds to make it. And quite a lot of iron to upgrade to that. The iron isn't so much a problem because we can get that all over the place. But the diamonds, that's, that's a pain in the butt. I'm growing diamonds as well as growing glowstone and all that, thanks to the kind donation of whoever I don't know yet. Um, but I would like to do something a bit different because we've done a lot with those kind of things already. I did think about the leaf eating generator, but I don't think I'm going to use that. Uh, the advanced generators is a good one. I like that, but I'd need a good supply of lava to make steam for that. And I don't particularly have a good supply of lava. There is a lava generator in this pack, though. Um, it's lava generator from x utilities is not what i'm talking about though there is a lava 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 thing let me see if i can get it in here it's like a lava factory so other than blood magic having uh, lava sigils 
and uh, a lava ritual and all that kind of stuff, which I don't plan on getting into. There's a lava factory controller from Actually Additions, and I believe that that creates a lava block. Now, I don't know if I can suck up that lava block. I think I can probably do it with an extra utilities node. Maybe some other things that I can pick it up with and get it into some form of fluid, fluid tank. Uh, so what do we need for this? We need a couple of blocks of the iron from Actually Additions. We need, we need to have a couple of these advanced coils, which I shouldn't really have a problem with. Black quartz and redstone, I've got plenty of. And, of course, gold nuggets, I've got plenty of as well. Uh, the iron casing, that's not very expensive. So I should be able to make one of these controllers. But I need to figure out what the other blocks are that I'm going to use with it. So I'm going to make one of these and I'm going to watch or re-watch one of the tutorials, probably Thorgal's tutorial on Actually Additions, and figure out what I'm going to do to create some lava. Alrighty, it's pretty simple. I ended up reading the book because I got a book, so I used the book. So uh, sue me. I, I need a casting, no, a uh, cast of some kind. What was it? Case. A casing? Is it a casing? It's a casing, boiler casing, induction casing, that's mechanism. I could go into mechanism for power, but that sounds like too much for this base. Uh, that's the one, right. So it's two of those blocks. Uh, should do that twice. Oh, really? I've got the last few. Okay, let's, uh, let's make another one quickly. Another, another block, anyway. And what was the other thing I needed? Uh, one of these. Yeah, so we'll get one of those. There we go. And this actually makes quite a few. This recipe makes 32 of them. So that's not bad at all, is it? Not bad at all. Uh, let's pop that just there. And zap it, please. Zap it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love that little... The, the technique for doing a crafting for this. It's awesome. Uh, it's, it doesn't use a lot per use either. So I'm, I'm leaving it as that. I don't need it in this particular base. See, at the warehouse, I don't really need it all set up. Uh, but I am going to need some cool stuff like this set up. So again, we're into experimental phase. Um, I'm still experimenting with this setup here just to see if it's enough. And then if it is enough, then I'll uh, set up a better system on this wall here to go into that section over there. I've still got plenty of space for testing things out. Uh, but right now... Right now, I'm going to need this off here. Uh, and that's going to be a power supply. And I'm going to have a power supply for this lava factory block. Uh, I guess it needs that from there. Yeah, it does. And it goes into there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And some coal. Do I happen to have any coal left down here? I've been digging out little pockets of coal. No coal there. Let's take this little bit of coal here. Um, I, I've probably got a supply somewhere kicking around, uh, but for right now, I'll just grab a few pieces so we can generate a little bit. Uh, I've actually thought of another idea for the uh, special coal that you get from Extra Utilities, so I want to test that out quickly now as well, um, just because if I can automate this part of the process as well, taking one of these resonators and just putting a piece of coal in, uh, I've got a network of six grid power at the minute and this gives like 15 so I generate a ton there can't remember how much it needed exactly uh, it needed 16 okay so let's keep going it needs a full 16 so I've got to wait for it wait for it there we go should be done and then I get the red coal which has a burn time of massive amounts it's like I don't know 10 times the way no it's not 10 times. It's... I'll calculate it yourselves. It, it's, it's a lot. It's like eight times more, maybe. Something like that. Uh, but I want to see if it works in here. Oh, yes, it does. Uh, click for Tesla mode. Click for Redstone Flux mode. Oh, okay. It's different. That's generating and filling this up quite quickly that's good okay so that's what we wanted to see that's what we wanted to see 
Now I just need one more piece of this. Thank you. And I'll save this coal for later. And I'll put this over here. And then I'm supposed to have casing there, casing there, casing there, and whoop, casing there. And that should generate. Lava factory is complete and can produce lava. Okay, so next up, I'll block that off for a second. Put one of these on here. And then try and break that out from there. There we go. Can I get it? Can I get it? Yes, I can. Good. Okay, so we've got to see when lava actually gets produced. Now, there's a certain amount of RF that's required for it. Uh, let's see. That's the setup. And it requires 150,000 RF per block of lava. Now, that's a lot. But I don't know if 150,000 RF is going to be produced by that one single piece of lava so it's a it's a it's a matter of i don't know yet i want to see if i can generate steam from the lava using the the normal generators the uh, advanced generators because i've been doing this before i should potentially check this out in creative mode uh steam turbine controller get a steam turbine put lava into it and then from that uh, put the world interaction upgrade in there as well that'll be good um, from that then try and produce enough steam from the lava in order to make enough power to power the system here I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it but I'm going to risk it and have a go if nothing else I've got a lava generator here and I might be able to do something with the lava a bit later on Let's see what we got. We're still nowhere near generating that first thing. But this lava factory is complete and can produce lava. So there's a good sign. Uh, the trouble is I'm running out of this uh, very fast. It's still burning that first piece of coal though. So I should probably set something up to do that. We could actually just generate a ton of power from coal generators. Uh, and use the uh, red coal. Because that, that's t you making a hell of a lot of RF per tick. And it's not really not really going down very fast. The flames are still up there. So I might not even need to generate the lava in this case. I, I would like it to be self-sustaining. That's the kind of feature that I want though. And having coal requirements is not a thing. Because I don't think there's a way of generating coal for nothing. Let's see if there's a recipe for coal. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I want to do this. Recipe for coal. There's the coal essence. So if I can get a coal essence farm going and have this auto creating in this method, then maybe, maybe I can do something about it. Uh, I don't know whether to go with the advanced generators or the coal. I'm starting to think now, because of the amount of RF and time this takes to produce that first piece of lava, that it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. But we're about to hit the right sweet spot now. It should produce a lava. Should produce a lava any time now? Is there something wrong? Oh, there it is. There's the lava. Okay, so now this should suck up the lava, shouldn't it? Transfer node. No. Well, that kind of solves that problem, doesn't it? There is no way of picking this up with a transfer node like this. There's probably another block. I know that there's a liquid uh, a liquid interface type thing. Uh, liquid. I know that there's a liquid, phantom liquid face. Maybe that was something I was looking at. No, it was, here we go. A fluid liquidator breaks the liquid in front of it and inserts the liquid into the network. Needs to be in con leads to be connected to the network. See, that sounded cool, didn't it? Uh, and it's very similar to the block thingy. It's very similar to the block one. Uh, only it's the one in front of it. Which, how do I make it in front of it? Can I place these up above me? Let's take this guy out. Can I place it looking down yes i can okay so i could potentially set that up over the lava or the lava version of that 
over the lava so it collects the lava every time it's created and puts it into the network and then the network can use that lava in an advanced generator or I could go down the coal route which is exceedingly boring but with the coal generator and extra utilities I can make the red coal and that will burn very very fast for a very long time and it's all kind of passive passive generation instead of using a ton for this kind of generation hmm let me think about it and I'll get back and I've done a little bit of changing around as well uh, I've now added some more capacitor banks to get power from that one solar panel one solar panel that's bringing in 8 RF per tick that one solar panel 8 RF per tick is OP when it's daytime all the time so, so I've got that charging up this and I've got, uh, I've moved the teleporters over to there so they're on the balcony. Uh, so that's all set up and I've changed these around here so that this is flowing down through here and I've got six, basically space for six things that use power next to the power cable. The power cable is running down, I've, I've disconnected it at the moment but it runs down into the next section which I've been working mostly on, the lava factory. The lava factory is now working, right? So that power cable comes down the back here. And it goes along that back wall and it carries on going all the way around the back wall and comes around. And I've broken it here, but it also comes in to meet here. Okay, so this runs the entire cable master system. Uh, and it looks like I need to connect it again now because it's running out. So I'll connect it there. And hopefully that will start going up. I need to potentially disconnect that one. I hadn't thought about that bit. I've just run out. <laughs> just run out of energy. Now I will be able to show you in just a moment what's going on here. When I disconnect that for a second. Let's, uh, let's have a turn it on and off. Let's have it active with a redstone signal. So it won't move unless we've got a redstone signal. There we go. So now that's that's off for a bit. Um, it is making lava. The factory is making lava. It takes 150,000 to make a unit of lava. And now that it's up to just over 800,000, you can tell that I'm making enough lava to deal with the situ... Wait, oh, wait a minute. I'm stuck in here now, aren't I? Uh, let's cobblestone my way out, I guess. Uh, let's go like this. There we go. That'll do. That'll live and out. I'll make some better way in and out. Really, it should be running all the time. But at the moment, I want the power to come over to here so that the whole thing is operating. And this is receiving 30, 40 RF per tick at the minute, which is cool. So what's happening here? Uh, this is self-replenishing self its own power supply, right? But I've got to wait till I've got 3 million RF in there before I can switch it on to be powering this. Otherwise, this drained down into here. I suppose I could have this so it's input only. Uh, insert only. Oh, look at that. Insert only. That way it's not moving anywhere. Awesome. Okay. That would be good. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So inside here, let's sh let's show you bit by bit. I'm trying to figure out where, where I've been because I've been messing around with it and I've moved it so many times. And now I'm trying to show you exactly what's going on. All right, so inside here, there is a heat collector from Actually Additions. And that generates 40 RF per tick when surrounded on all four sides by lava. Okay. Occasionally, it eats a block of lava or a block of lava disappears. So it generates from the heat of the lava. Occasionally a lava block disappears. So I've picked up these actually add-ons fluid rip, uh, placers, which will place a lava next to it each time. Okay, and over here in the lava, uh, the lava factory, the lava factory is producing lava, and there is a fluid liquidator here which absorbs it into the network, puts it into the network in this storage tank here, the fluid box. And uh, let me access it through here. So I can technically, I don't think I can fill up buckets, but I can empty buckets. I've been emptying buckets into there. Also, I've used that tank over there, that little dark tank that I filled up with like 
140 buckets. I put that in there to fill it up to the 64 quickly so that it wasn't taking the fluid out of here so it could have a backlog of energy sorted out so I could see whether it was producing fast enough. So these fluid placers use the fluid export cable set to lava to receive the lava from this tank set up here that's connected up and they comes down into each one of these and this keeps these full of lava so that every time it can place a lava it will place a lava so when the heat collector uses one of the lava blocks another one is immediately replaced and it carries on generating the 40 rf per tick uh, it's a bit random i did a little test before i started setting it all up and the little test is uh, oh, the first lava disappeared at 72,000 RF created, the second lava at 115 RF, uh, 115,000 RF created, and then the third one at 265,000 RF created. So those big staggering leaps between how much lava was created and how much power was put into there. Um, I don't know that it would be fully self consistent for self-sustaining <laughs> self-sustaining but it is a power option that i went to before the cut i was looking into either making a uh, cinegas um, um advanced generators i was either going with the cinegas cinegas advanced generators which meant making a tree farm of some kind or making a coal farm and feeding the coal into the generator and uh, potentially just using a coal generator for instance just making a coal farm and feeding a coal generator but the coal farm to coal generator just seems boring just seems boring everybody could use it fairly quickly and i've seen other people doing it so i wanted to check out how all of this storage network stuff with liquids could manipulate the lava from actually additions so we're using two different blocks from actually additions here and adding it in to the fluid network or the storage network solution to keep it moving around and as you can see here because it's a lava on each side i can actually make another three uh, fluid places and another two uh, well i make another <laughs> another two of the the lava generators and one two three four five six fluid places and connect it all up in this manner so that there's still a lava block shared between the two. Lots of things going on. Let's um, make us some more ingots. <laughs> Again, so many free nuggets now as well. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, this this will also fill in the gaps that I can't place another one of the lava generators. The lava generators can do so much for me but they need to be surrounded by blocks. So what I was considering uh, when I was thinking about this earlier was taking out like these blocks here and placing an extra utilities um, generator so that it generates power based on the lava that it's got next to it. And so I can capitalize on this wasted piece of space around the back there you won't see that piece of space and i can capitalize on having that piece of space same here with the one that's going to be next to these three blocks and so on i can fill in the gaps behind the lava factory itself and generate some extra uh, extra utilities power because each that will generate two from that that will generate nothing but that will generate two that will generate two i think it only generates two if it's got a lava block next to it i don't know that more than one makes any difference but yeah that'll be uh, more daytime r uh not rf extra utilities power that'll be more daytime extra utilities power constantly flowing into the system which means that i could turn my coal supplies into red coal using that network of extra utilities power and burn that for extra power into these sort of things now i'm gonna reconnect this now because it needs to be reconnected now i've had a little chance to charge up the other thing 
So we'll uh, set that to uh, in and out. There we go. And I don't need to have a block there. I don't need to worry about that block. I could also put another one of those things there as well to sort that out. I could have um, a coal generator just here just to add a little bit of extra power every now and again. Uh, that's now... That's now... Yeah. Only using one RF per tick every now and again. So this storage network only uses about one RF every now and again. It goes down to minus one every now and again. So it doesn't... This storage network, just for doing the simple processes that it's doing, like moving an item out of here, one RF, or moving some fluid into here, uh, one RF, just doesn't use a lot of power so it's a great storage system because it's not constantly using power uh, it only occasionally uses power and i'm occasionally getting power as well which is awesome uh, and so when this is all full i should have a never-ending loop as you can see it's still constantly filling even when it needs to create a lava source block at 150,000 rf it still is maintaining a healthy supply and that's just off one of those heat uh, heat generators which i think is pretty epic i i like it a lot i may choose to bring it out on the diagonal down this way though but that might change this little setup here for the power supply uh, but at the same point i think maximizing the amount of rf per tick i can get from this situation would be awesome and having a corner of lava generation would look awesome there as well. I can move this section around as much as I need to to set that up differently. But this this is pretty cool. I like it. These were fairly expensive though. I did it did cost me a fair bit for these kind of things. But I'm pleased with the overall finished result. I'm glad I've played around with them now and checked it out. And I like the system. I hope you do too. If uh, if you do like this then please like the episode. I will see you very soon for some more Avant. Thank you very much for your comments and likes, and I will see you then. Goodbye.